So these are the limited edition Bang & Olufsen H95 ANC headphones. Now, besides being a major flex because they do retail for an eye-watering $800, the H95s actually perform very well. Now, they do have some quirks that I am going to point out, but besides that, I do feel that these headphones do manage to justify their price. Now, obviously, these headphones aren't for everybody, and I really wouldn't recommend that you would run out and get these headphones. But the H95s really do ooze luxury. Now, first off, we're going to talk about the included accessories here, because this is an area where most other manufacturers are really trying to cut corners here. Now, these headphones come included with an aluminum carrying case, and the inside is lined with matching textile from the headphones themselves. Now, just the experience of taking your headphones out and putting them back in feels special. But even though this case is beautiful, there are some drawbacks to keep in mind here. For commuting, this case isn't the best because it is larger and heavier than your typical case. And unfortunately, since it is aluminum, it is prone to scratching. Personally, I think B&O should have gone with either a leather-wrapped or a textile-wrapped exterior and had the exposed aluminum on the inside. This way, you still get the luxurious feel, but you save yourself the heartbreak of scratching up your beautiful case. But case aside, the included cables are also super premium. The H95s come included with a fabric USB-C to USB-A charging cable and a 3.5mm audio cable. And they even come included with an airplane adapter. But now let's talk about the headphones themselves. It goes without saying that these headphones have amazing build quality. Now, one of the things that is special about them from the H9s is that these headphones are fully collapsible. Now, these headphones have a mostly aluminum body. When you extend their headband, it simply glides in and out. The top portion of the headband has a hit of cowhide leather. Underneath, we've got a little bit of padded fabric, and when we make our way down to the ear pads themselves, we've got lambskin leather. Now, obviously, when it comes to materials, these headphones are pulling all the stops here, but personally, the leather on these ear pads is a little rough or stiff for my taste. Now, the leather on these ear pads feels like the leather that you would find on a car seat, wallet, or leather jacket. It's not as soft or as supple as the leather or leatherette that you would find on other headphones out there, like either the Sennheiser Momentum 3s or the Bose NC700s. Regardless, these headphones are using super premium materials, but I would have liked to have seen more supple feeling lambskin leather on these ear pads. And when it comes to fit, even though these headphones fit well, they do have some drawbacks to point out. Now, first off, these headphones do fit rather firm. I can wear them for a long while, and I will say that they are big head approved because they don't feel like they're actually squeezing your head. But if you're looking for something with less clamping force, you might want to look elsewhere. Now, since these headphones are using super premium materials, that also means they are on the heavier side. The H95s weigh in at 323 grams, making them a pair of heavy boys. Because on average, your typical pair of headphones weigh in between 270 and 290 grams. And for comparison's sake, the Bose NC700s weigh in at 263 grams, and the Sony 1000 XM4s weigh in at 254 grams. So this extra weight on the H95s means a few things. First off, these headphones are super noticeable when you're walking around with them on because you can really feel them shifting around when they're on your head. And these aren't a pair of headphones that you really forget that you're wearing, even when you're just sitting still. And since these headphones are rather heavy, they can develop a little bit of strain on the back of your neck after you've been wearing these headphones for like an hour. Now, these headphones don't cause anywhere near as much neck strain as the JBO Club 1 or JBO Club 950BTs, because those puppies weigh in at a staggering 378 grams. But the H95s are entering neck strain territory. And just for comparison's sake, the H9s weigh in at 285 grams, which is average. But when it comes to the earpads themselves, thankfully the H95s are using oval earpads, because as a whole, Bang & Olufsen has just loved using circular earpads on all of their other headphones. Now these earpads are fairly spacious, and they should be able to accommodate the most ear types. 
but they aren't super deep. Now, the fabric on these ear pads does push down a little bit, giving you a little bit of extra room. But this also means that you feel like your ears are still getting pressed down. So I still recommend that if you have larger ears or ears that stick out a lot, then you'll still want to go with something like either the Bose NC700 or the Sennheiser PXC 552s, because their ear pads are still way more spacious. Nonetheless, these ear pads fit me just fine and these headphones do fit well, but my major critique here is going to be their weight. Since these headphones do weigh in at 323 grams, they are super noticeable when you're walking around with them on, and they wouldn't be my first pick if I were looking for a pair of headphones to wear for hours and hours on end, because you never forget that you have them on. But I just guess that's a sacrifice you're gonna have to make if you want something with this kind of build quality. Now, when it comes to tech specs, just as you'd expect, these headphones charge via a USB-C port. And when it comes to battery life, these headphones have an advertised battery life of 38 hours with their active noise cancellation turned on, which is above average. And with their active noise cancellation turned off, they can go for as long as 50 hours. Now, even though Bang & Olufsen doesn't have any official numbers, or at least I couldn't find them, I did find that if you charge these headphones up from a dead battery for 10 minutes, they're going to easily get you 5 hours of playback time. So battery life on these headphones isn't just great, it's above average. Now when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, these headphones are using Bluetooth 5.1, but more importantly, they can be connected to two devices at the same time. So you can easily hot swap from one device to another, which is always great. And when it comes to watching movies or videos on your phone, these headphones do have a zero latency across the board, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device. And when it comes to audio codecs, these headphones have support for SBC, AAC, and Aptex Adaptive. And if you want, you can always just use the USB-C port on these headphones as a wired connection, which is rather rare these days. But like I mentioned earlier, these headphones do come included with a very premium 3.5mm audio cable. But since you can use the USB-C port on these headphones as a wired connection, it does make me wish that we also got a premium USB-C to USB-C cable. But now let's talk about listening to music with these headphones. Now, these headphones do sound their best with their active noise cancellation turned off. With their ANC turned on, the bass on these headphones resonates slightly less and they sound slightly less open. I think your average person might not notice or care, but I do. But at the very least, I can say that the active noise cancellation on these headphones doesn't change their sound nearly as much as the ANC on the Bowers & Wilkins PX7s. Now, from a performance standpoint, these headphones have a really good instrument separation, a decently wide sound stage, and the bass on these headphones doesn't bottom out. But, these headphones are better suited for people who like a neutral or vocals-focused EQ. Even though these headphones do have a decent amount of bass, these headphones are not going to physically rattle your head, like let's say the Sony 1000 XM4s. The bass on the H95s is the resonating kind, similar to the Bose NC700 or the Sennheiser Momentum 3s. Now, these headphones do have an adjustable EQ, and you can up the bass on them to rattle your head a little bit, but they still aren't going to rattle your head nearly as much as the Sony's. And personally, I am not the biggest fan of this kind of EQ adjustment. Because if you move this dial too deep into warm or high bass, they do end up sounding a little shallow because they end up pushing the mids down. Or if you want to bring the vocals out on these headphones, they can end up sounding nasally and flat because they end up lowering the bass and upping the treble. So personally for me, I'll mostly just use these headphones while in their stock EQ because I like their balanced nature or I might use them with their dial a little bit into the high bass and energetic area. But overall, these headphones are better suited for people who like a neutral EQ, and I do wish Bang & Olufsen would just give us full control over the EQ settings on these headphones. Now, when it comes to the media controls, these headphones have a physical dial that you can use to adjust your volume, and they also have a touchpad to skip through your music. 
Now, personally, I am a really big fan of having a physical dial to adjust your volume, and the touchpad on these headphones is super accurate. So, controlling your music with these headphones feels very intuitive. However, I do gotta point out that Bang & Olufsen did copy this dial system from the Surface headphones. And even though I really do think the gnarling on these dials is a very nice touch, I do gotta admit that the dials on the Surface headphones feels better than the dials on the H95s. First off, there's placement. Having the dial on the outside, like on the Surface headphones, feels more natural and is easier to reach than having the dial on the inside, like on the H95s. And then there's also tactile feedback. The dial on the Surface headphones has a satisfying resistance to it that makes it feel very intentional when you're adjusting this dial, whereas the dials on the H95s is a little too loose. And then there's also the fact that the dials on the H95s does like to wiggle a little bit, whereas the dial on the Surface headphones doesn't wiggle at all. So overall, what I'm getting at here is that I am a big fan of this dial setup and the controls on the H95s feels very intuitive. But we do gotta give credit where credit is due. Microsoft really did knock it out the park when it came to designing these dials. Cause unfortunately, the dials on the H95s just don't feel as good, but they're still good. But now let's talk about the active noise cancellation on these headphones. Like with the Surface headphones, you can adjust your ANC on the H95s by using the dial on the left ear cup. And like I mentioned earlier, the active noise cancellation on the H95s does affect how they sound. It slightly reduces the amount of bass these headphones have and it narrows them up a little bit. But I think your average user isn't even going to notice. But from a performance standpoint, I am pleasantly surprised. The active noise cancellation on the H95s has very little cabin pressure, which is great for comfort, and there's zero hissing in the background. And these headphones block out a lot of noise as well. But so that you can see for yourself, we're going to jump into an ANC test. So, like you may have just seen, the active noise cancellation on the H95s is very good. They block out way more noise than a pair of entry-level ANC headphones like the Sony Watcha 710N, and they also block out noticeably more noise than the Surface headphones too, which block out nearly as much noise as a pair of premium ANC headphones. My only critique here is that since the microphone array on these headphones is fairly exposed, they do like to pick up the occasional wind noise when walking outdoors. But other than that, the active noise cancellation on the H95s is very impressive. And when it comes to the ambient mode on these headphones, it's very good as well. The ambient mode on these headphones sounds very natural for the most part, but can sound a little over amplified if you were to set them to max. But other than that, there's zero hissing in the background, which is super important for when you're watching movies with these headphones. However, I do gotta point out that this ambient mode lets in everything. It's not the active kind that will actively block out sudden spikes and loud noises like the ambient mode on the Surface Headphones 2 does. But finally, here's the microphone test. Now, in a quiet room, the microphone on these headphones is decent enough, but I do wish that these headphones did a better job of isolating my voice. But you can still definitely take phone calls with these headphones. But surprisingly, the microphone on these headphones does do a decent job of blocking out low frequency sounds like road noise. 
because if we were to switch over to my lapel microphone, you're going to clearly hear all of this road noise. But if we were to switch back over to the Bang & Olufsen H95s, it is slightly reduced. But unfortunately, when it comes to chatter, these headphones don't do the best job. Because right now, you can clearly hear all of this chatter in the background, and it is rather hard to just hear my voice. So if you do plan on taking lots and lots of phone calls with these headphones, you do want to do it in a quiet room. So with all that being said, I think paying $800 for any pair of ANC headphones is overkill. But I ain't mad at the H95s, they actually deliver. Just from a pure build quality perspective, these headphones are using premium materials, they're exquisitely built, and they come included with just as premium feeling cables, and they've got that aluminum case. From a performance standpoint, these headphones sound great, and they should be able to please anyone who appreciates a neutral sound signature. They block out a lot of noise, and they have a good ambient mode as well. They even tick off extra credit boxes like having an above average battery life, being able to use their USB-C port as a wired connection, and they have some really intuitive controls to them. But granted, Microsoft did manage to execute on the feel of those dials better. Now, my major critique here is going to come down to comfort, because these headphones are on the heavier side. But I guess that's just something that comes with the territory if you're aiming for this kind of build quality. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video. So hit that like button and get subscribed. It helps out more than you realize. If you want to pick any of the products up mentioned in this video, those will be linked in the description down below. And you can also support the channel by checking out the merch store. But other than that, I'll catch you next time.